No, that's not. Well, over there. No, that's not you. That is me. <laughs> I swear to God, that's me. What's happening, y'all? Welcome back to my channel. It's Nefertiti, and I'm back with another video. And I'm back with another video. Hey, 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 hey. Hey. Hi, guys. Y'all see my hair? So, this summer, I cut all my hair off. I did another big chop. I did one in college, and I did another one recently where I cut, like, all my hair off. So, it's growing back. I can get a ponytail now, but y'all still will... The little curls, it's in that that ugly stage. Y'all know what I'm talking about. That, that stage where it's like... It ain't cute, but you gotta figure out how to make it look cute. That stage. But that's alright, y'all still rocking it. However, I hope you guys are doing great. Welcome back to my channel if you guys are new here. If you guys are already subscribed, welcome. Hey, make sure you guys hit that like button and be sure to subscribe because I have a lot more content coming. Guys, I'm just letting you guys know I'm going to be throwing out a lot of different type of videos that I will be reacting to because I'm trying to figure out what my niche is on this channel. So I need to figure out what you guys like, what you guys are into. That way I can give you the content that you really want because I want to entertain you guys. I'm also going to get more into um, like people, missing people and like um, more into like mysteries, mysteries and like unsolved mysteries and stuff like that. So just let me know what y'all like. Y'all can throw out your little comments or whatever. Uh, today I'm going to be reacting to the Roommates podcast with I think Sean Body or Boudé. I don't know how you say her name. But the uh, title is Why Beautiful Women Struggle With Dating. And I just thought this was interesting. So I didn't watch it yet, but I do want to see what she has to say because, you know, dating is a big, it's a big thing that we all go through and maybe we can learn something from it. Right? Right. Okay, let's get into it. I'm like, okay, the same thing that was happening with me with dating. I still wasn't... Started. I'm like, okay, the same thing that was happening with me with dating. I still wasn't having those great connections. I was getting a lot of my own ways. I was getting ghosted. I just, I wasn't finding joy in that. And so I started studying pickup artistry and seduction and influence and connection. And that transformed my life in every way. And I thought, how do I package all these great books into an interesting read? Mm. Like, I think it's quite fascinating just even you talking about struggles in dating because you're obviously a very beautiful woman, very intelligent. Thank you. you. Know? <laughs> and and so most people wouldn't assume that you would have some challenges. Like, what were some of the challenges that you were facing consistently? I don't know if you guys are on Instagram. Every hot girl complains about dating. The yeah. hottest, like, I said that about Brittany Rayner, whose book um, Judges Cover came out. And I was like, this is such an affirmation. Like, if you, this woman has a ass like a coffee table mm. and still like has huh i like coffee tables yeah it was a, it's a very nice <laughs> very very nice authentic <laughs> coffee table oh, um, oh you touched it no oh. i mean <laughs> i've seen the gym I'm, you, I'm, I'm not i'm really really not an aficionado at what is or isn't real i'm not good at that stuff okay. but i would assume i see the gym work i mean whatever yeah. i don't I... sorry guys if it's a little bit blurry i'm looking that i can tell that it's blurry i'm not sure why i don't know if it's my quality or their quality but Sorry about that. Don't know. It looks wonderful. Um, it's whatever form. But I would say that like, if there's no face of what somebody who's a bad connector looks like. And that's what the artist seduction teaches you, is that there's nine different ways to be highly seductive and to be great at connecting with others. Only one of those has to do with how you look. And looks is a depreciating asset. And there's a study that was done that's like, there's no proof that people who date somebody who's hot have relationship satisfaction yeah have you heard the study where it says i agree with that it's actually like sometimes the more attractive you are the, the, the more difficult it is for you to find somebody in a romantic relationship have you ever read that before i haven't no oh it's quite fascinating yeah, yeah. i was saying yeah what i wanted to say is that i do think it's important to do your research whenever you're like trying to date now, I know there's so many different ins and outs and roles that people have, but I don't think we should always go by roles. But I do think it is important to learn about how a man thinks and how a woman thinks, so don't be afraid to get some books and learn about that. But what Hafiz just said about it being complicated for attractive people to find, um, like true love or that true connection, I agree to a point. Because I feel like when you're more attractive, you do you do draw in a lot of people, but you don't know who is there for you or who just wants you on their arm. And that's, it sounds silly, but that's true. Because some people, 
don't always just want you for you. They just like the fact that you're attractive, you know? And they're not really trying to date you because they like you. They like how you look. It is, but I mean, I was also a dick. You know oh, what I mean? Okay. Like, <laughs> yeah, I, um, I've never gotten along with teachers my whole life. I'm a very disagreeable. I would say, like, someone actually said to me, because when I started, you know, doing sex as a career, that sounds like a prostitution. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> you said <laughs> well, That's how my parents interpreted it, actually. But when I started, you know, talking about sex as a career at, like, 19, 20 years old, my parents were so angry and upset with it and against it. My mom's reaction was so visceral, and I didn't give a fuck. And so a part of my, the reason I even have this career is because I'm a dick. I'm like, I don't care what anyone else thinks, I'm going to do it. But that that's the thing, too, is a lot of the qualities that we have, but to your point, that aid us in certain areas in life actually prevent us from being successful in others. And so that headstrong, I'm doing things my way, I don't care what anyone else thinks, this is who I am, take it or leave it, really helped to propel or start my career, but it was stopping me from making healthy romantic connections. So I had to acknowledge at one point. Mm, do y'all hear what she's saying? She's admitting to the fact that she has that I don't care what you think attitude, which is good in some aspects of her life. However, it's not good in every aspect of her life. So it's not good in the dating aspect, but it's good in the um, the work aspect. We have to learn to balance. We have to learn to balance when it comes to relationships. Like We have to know what to put on the back burner and what to bring to the front uh, to the front of the the, uh, the stage because some things we shouldn't bring into our relationships especially if you are like a woman and you are very dominant at work like if you're a manager or you're like the leader of some you know some part of work or you have to be in control um it brings more of your masculineness you know you're more masculine when you're you're working especially when you're working with men but when you go home you got to learn how to be Back in touch with your sensitive side, with your vulnerable side, with your feminine side. Yeah. Point that I'm like, the common denominator is you. You know, like every Subway sandwich you go to, you get in an argument. Every airplane you're on, every relationship you're in, like, and agreeableness is the number one trait which determines relationship, longevity, and success, or someone's ability, which we're told nice people finish last, but in truth, nice people stay in the race the longest. Mm. Mm. Never heard of it. So the traits that you saw, like what what made you change? Like how do you start going through that process with some of the things that you did? It's troubleshooting when you're like, oh, something's not working. And then you can do the troubleshooting what a lot of people do, where they're like, other, other, other. Mm. Men ain't shit. This person ain't shit. The world ain't shit. Dating ain't shit. You can do that for a while. And I did that for a while. And then eventually I was like, maybe that's true. Maybe dating is shit. Maybe it is hard. Maybe it is trash. But there are people who are doing well yeah. i can't deny that there are people who have success in this area i'm just not one of them and if i want to be one of the successful people i gotta start paying attention to what they're doing that i'm not and that's where books came into play or just being an observer or being a listener and a learner and being able to make important changes in my life and my own personality and then i think that's when i had a massive shift what was the biggest thing that you changed that you felt like caused hold on before hafiz gets into his question do y'all see how she had to put her pride aside I agree with that because I used to be one of them people who had bad attitudes, you know. And like I said, certain attitudes you have can help in certain areas of your life. And certain attitudes you have can hurt your areas of your life. But when you know you have a negative attitude or, you're, or you have a bad attitude, it's so important to check yourself because you don't know where you're going in life. And you don't want to stop your blessings or you don't want to close doors that's open to you because you have a bad attitude. So I'm glad she checked herself. That we need to do that more often, like just look in the mirror, check ourselves, make sure you know we're doing what we're supposed to do, and not being afraid to admit the fact that we are wrong, and we gotta, we gotta, we gotta grow, we gotta change. Sometimes we gotta change things, but it takes active. Sorry, y'all. It takes active listening, and it takes you applying what you learn to grow. The most drastic shift in your life. Um, my disagreeableness. Like, mm. I honestly would say, like, I, I'm married now, and. My number one advice for, like, a healthy marriage is, like, developing your shut-the-fuck-up filter. <laughs> like, there's yeah. so many times that I always want to voice my opinion or say how I would do things or give an alternate route. Like, I'm just, like, always... And then if I just be quiet sometimes, and even if something it doesn't 
please me, you know? Sometimes I want to correct right away, but if I just be quiet, one, sometimes it actually pans out even better than I thought it would. Or number two, it's like, let that person have the joy of having their vision come to fruition. Just like you want to assert your vision in this moment. Like, they also want that same feeling of knowing they did it their way. So, like, shutting up and, like, shutting down that voice in my head, which, you know, stopped me from being a good student, where I was always trying to one-up the teacher or say how things could be better, but versus, like, if I'm trusting you to partner with you, I actually have to trust you. Um, so that, I think, was my, my biggest shift. No, I Do you guys have something like that for yourself that you recognize, like... Oh, my gosh. What I love about this, and I'm seeing this for the first time just like you guys are, but what I love about this, uh, a part of this episode was that she took full accountability and she wasn't pointing the finger. She wasn't making excuses. She wasn't saying what he needed to do for her to act a, a certain way. She talked about what she needed to change. And she, when she, when she changed it, it changed certain parts of her life in, in, in a drastic way. So sometimes, you know, when, when it comes to relationships and not just romantic relationships, relationships in general sometimes we have to know when to be quiet we have to know when to speak but not only that we have to know what to say and how to come at a person and how to talk to them because that's the number one thing with relationships is communication how you're communicating and not just the fact that you're communicating are you communicating properly each person um each person receives communication differently. So you, when you're in a relationship with somebody or it's a friendship or a family relationship, you have to understand like where that person's coming from, you know, and also know when to check yourself and when you're wrong and when to admit that you're wrong. But I hope you guys like this. Again, give me feedback on the things that you guys like and that you don't like. Be sure to like and subscribe if you haven't already. And make sure you guys um, follow me on my social medias in the description below. If you haven't already, join my motivational channel. It will also be in the description below. All right. Love you guys. God bless. See you in the next video. Welcome back to my channel. If you are not new here. Wait, huh?